he's 14 weeks now. Cute. Well, I'd say he's, yeah, he's getting close to four months, four and a half months. Yeah. He's not very big, but he, um, yeah. This question for you is how did you get involved with being a foster home for cats? Well, I actually adopted a cat to um, Regina Cat Rescue mm -hmm. back in 2008. It was called People for Animals then, and um, the cat I had Ella already, my first cat from the RHS, and I wanted to get a friend for her. And um, I really liked the idea of the cats being fostered with other animals. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, have a better idea what you're getting, and it's a little bit more predictable. Ella was from the shelter, and she was very, you know, shy and kind of really sucky and cuddly there. Got her home, and she was like, she was a, she was a terror. She was a biting <laughs> cat. She was, you know, very um, needed a lot of stimulation. So, I mean, it's not that I didn't love her, and I always was happy with her. But when it came to getting her a friend, I thought it be better if I knew what I was getting myself into yeah. ahead of time. Yeah. So what kind of challenges do you run into when you have these foster cats come home with you? Um, well, you know, it's never super easy. It's yeah, every once in a while you get really easy going laid back cats that fit in. Um, it's stressful for your own animals. That's one of the biggest deterrents I think for people is that yeah. they don't want to put their own animals out. Um, but our foster homes typically are multi-pet. Usually the people that want to get involved and want to help are people that already have animals. Mm -hmm. And so um, it can be stressful on your own animals. You do, we do recommend they be people with, have their own cats, you know, up to date on vaccinations and stuff. You do run the risk of, you know, exposing to them to things. If you get a sick one, you know, that comes in and you don't realize it's carrying something. Uh, um, so there's always that risk. Um, this little guy is, um, like I said, he got his antiparasitic treatments before I took him. Um, yeah, um, which which is what we typically do, vaccinations and, and antiparasitics. Uh, but you know, they can develop upper respiratory, it can be dormant in their systems and stress will flare it up, that kind of thing. Um, cats can have illnesses and shed viruses that but not have any outward signs of being sick. So, you know, um, Ella was sick just before Christmas and none of the other cats were and I couldn't figure it out but I suspect it was a cat that I interacted with somehow and brought something in but yeah so that's the kind of things that you kind of run into and I mean we're talking about upper respiratory usually and like things like your mites nothing real serious but it's still still a pain sometimes when it's affecting your own animals because we doubled the number of sterilizations we were doing in a year easily from like well pretty much 300 now a year that's a lot.